craft beer culture has exploded in Saskatchewan. It's an undeniable phenomenon. Five years ago in this province, barely anyone knew what a growler was. IPAs were something you had to leave the province to find a really good one. Never mind those barrel-aged beers or the Brett Pale Ales. It's just, there's been so much change in five years. It's not just beer that's undergoing this massive change though. It's happening with other things too, like sneakers and hats. Television and movies have captured these trends. You remember the character Turtle from Entourage. He's collecting his sneakers. I'm sorry new kicks went so quick, but I made you an even more limited edition. They're wearable art. Besides, the joy that Turtle's feeling right now is worth every penny. Or Key and Peele having a hat competition, which ends up with Key having a lady sewing a hat on a platform on his head. Uh, what's up, man? <laughs> Style and fashion, it matters a lot to some people who are super passionate, just like craft beer drinkers. It's something that we're also seeing happening with eyewear. We're seeing celebrities who have their signature eyewear, something we can't imagine them not having. They're unrecognizable without it. Think of Bono taking his sunglasses off. He's, you can't, he doesn't look the same. John Lennon, Lady Gaga, I mean, she, she has different kinds of glasses every time you see her, but I, I, when I see her without makeup and without her glasses, I don't recognize her as the same person, but when she's in those big chunky glasses, you know that's Lady Gaga. Not having their eyewear changes their person, changes who they are. That's happening in Regina too. Ryan Horn opened Specs by Ryan with an aim to mine that vein, to capture that local market, to bring our city's eyewear game to the next level and offer a unique experience when it comes to picking new glasses, new sunglasses. I'm really excited to explore that with him, explore that culture. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, glad to be here. But before we get talking about eyewear, we're gonna be drinking I've Always Been Hazy IPA by Rebellion Brewing. It's sitting right here in front of me and it's just staring me down. I gotta grab it right away. <laughs> Let's not wait. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting here drinking your beer, but that is not what I expected from uh, an IPA. Uh, it's a New England style, mm -hmm. and you said you've never had a New England before? Correct, yeah. Um, some IPAs have kind of uh, scared me off a little bit because I felt they're still a little strong for me. This is very, this is this is too easy, man. I don't know. <laughs> this, <laughs> the New Englanders have done something right. Well, what do you think you're tasting? What would you compare it to? Um... What would I compare it to? Uh, well, I'm a big fan of um, the lentil ale, but it seems fruitier than that. Um, and not as strong, but the haze makes it look very appetizing for sure. Um, the, the natural look to it is so appealing. And then once it hits, I just wasn't expecting that it would be so easy but very light, somewhat fruity, but not too fruity. Not where I'm like, okay, I can have one and then I'm done. Like this is, this calls for another one, I would say. <laughs> well, I'll let you know, as of the date we're recording this podcast, this beer got tapped about six days ago. Mm -hmm. Super fresh. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to beers like this, like IPAs, New England style IPAs, you want that freshness. Right. So those big, bold aromas, that citrus, mm -hmm. that orange, yep. that tropical flavor really is, comes out and is pronounced. Mm. One thing I'd say is if it's your first time having this beer, before you even put it in your mouth, just put your nose in the cup, take a big whiff. Yeah. And you get that, that bright, citrusy, tropical, it's like inviting. Right. No, I did notice that first and I thought, okay, well, here we go. And it matched the smell very well, <laughs> you know. It's kind of freaky to me 
between the visual presentation of the beer and then understanding how juicy it is, I would confuse it for orange juice. You are not wrong there, absolutely. Yeah, it definitely could look like a mimosa. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it does have the carbonation in there a bit and uh, definitely looks like it's orange juice mixed with something, but uh, this is delightful. This, uh, this will be my next keg. Deadly. <laughs> It is a rare, it is a seasonal offering. Um, it's the very first time we've done this particular recipe. Mm -hmm. Brewmaster Dave spent more than a year researching it wow. and iterating and developing. He was, he's was he been thinking about it since he started doing the milkshake beers. Okay. He's like, I want to capture this. I want to I want to get this. Ooh. And we're thinking we're going to bring it on as a, a semi-regular seasonal. Well. I would think that would be successful. Um, again, I'm, I'm still new to IPA. It's it's uh it, it's been tough for me to really enjoy more than one, at a time or two. Uh, but this is something that uh, uh, for me is I just like easier beers personally, and uh, like I'm a big fan of Blast Off. I've had a couple kegs of those already, um, in my store uh, upstairs. I have a, a kegerator up there, so um, uh, this is. I, yeah, this is very comparable and, and but uh, as far as easy to drink and very tasty. This is what craft beer is about to me. This is exactly what craft beer is about. Very enjoyable. Well done. <laughs> Way to go, Brewmaster Dave. <laughs> One of the things that he said that kind of resonated with other people was he said it has a pillowy mouthfeel. Okay, yeah. And that, to me, it was kind of weird. And I'm like, oh, man, he's, he's kind of right. Yeah. <laughs> Pillowy mouthfeel. <laughs> it is soft. Yeah, it is soft. Um, I guess you would see some other beers having a little more of a, um, a harsher uh, pathway down the, the, into the mouth. But, uh, but this is, yeah, this is soft. That's a very good way to describe it. I'm still, like, I, I have a tough way to describe what my senses are uh, as opposed to somebody like yourself who's in the, the beer industry and you have all the the words and the and the you know jargon for it but uh it's like i know when you describe it, it's like yes that's what i'm noticing <laughs> exactly thank you <laughs> <laughs> well that's part of the reason i bring yep. guests on the show i i want to get you guys as excited about craft mm -hmm. beer as i am and uh, last week's yeah. guest he had a sour for the very first time yep. he never had it before and he's like that's exactly it. You're yeah. just right on the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's talk eyewear, man. Cool. What the heck is going on with the custom eyewear game? Well, uh, like you mentioned before, it is absolutely very much on a parallel with craft beer. Uh, it's just where those there, there's a large segment of the population who are just uh, disenfranchised with uh, the status quo and with... Uh, um, the standard everyday offerings and uh, I'm here to offer uh, and bring to our little city some world-class products uh, also made from very small companies but very um, brilliant designers who have made an impact a direct impact on fashion so rather than some of the big box names uh, and brands that are you know somewhat designed commercially from who knows what cubicle and, and mass produced and you know uh, some sweatshop in Asia somehow um, the the uh, independent the small independent brands are handmade uh, limited numbers are made uh, they hold up so much better they have character they have uh, style they have um, a story and they just they feel different they look different and they last longer uh, and they're just more enjoyable to wear so that's what I uh, I got hooked onto that a number of years ago and uh, when it was time to open up my store I, I promised myself that you know I'm gonna um, offer what I am truly passionate about um, I could have a hundred people walk in the door and ask for do you have Ray-Ban, for example, and, and I, it doesn't matter how many people would ask, I would point them in other directions of where they may find it, and, uh, but also offer them alternatives uh, you know, that, that they you know, may want to you know, explore. But um, I stay very uh, staunchly 
true to the independent game. Um, again, I'm, I'm a small, small little business and my vendors are all small independents as well and I develop such great relationships with them. And I think when people uh, discover it, much like craft beer, it's like, wow, it's, you know, when I need beer the next time, uh, it, you know, I'm going to think twice about going for that uh, two, four, or that, you know, 18 pack of, uh, you know, everyday swill, you know, and just, it's just, you know, people, I think in, in Saskatchewan and Regina in particular are, are getting to more and more educated uh, and enjoying the finer things. So that's, yeah. <laughs> the eyewear is the finer thing. What they people can see the difference, feel yeah. the difference. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and I've been doing that seg segment of the eyewear industry for many years now, and developed I think uh, a nice uh, uh, clientele and following that have really bought into what I've brought, and uh, it seems to be growing and growing. And um, we've been recognized internationally a couple times as. Uh, you know, doing some cool things, winning some awards um, globally, which is a pretty cool thing for a little little shop in Regina, you know. So, uh, and I, yeah, I'm just really proud and ha just having fun. It's a fun part of the industry. Um, again, when, when I could post a, 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 an image of a client uh, on any of our social media platforms, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and then the designer, him or herself, you know, likes it and comments on it, that's pretty cool. When that designer, you know, in, in the next breath could have a, you know, a picture of, you know, a Lady Gaga wearing her, you know, their product or, or you know, Brad Pitt on the cover of GQ wearing her product or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're doing some cool things in this city and uh, much like Rebellion, uh, I feel a very strong parallel with, with what Rebellion's doing and what, what their, um, uh, motives are and what you know they're they're trying to do and and I feel the same way only just we just put stuff on your face and you we, you know you have stuff that we just pour down our mouths and it's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it all feels good if someone was entirely new to trying to understand this custom eyewear culture mm -hmm. how would you relate it to them what would be the easiest jumping off point well, um, it, it, it's, it's not as, as custom as it is um, more uh, high quality, um, you know, smaller batch type, type uh, products that uh, how you could just tell there's more detail, there's more, uh, more substance and just a different style and, and that has proven over and over again when I see people who may have moved away I haven't seen them maybe eight nine years they walk in oh my god I found you and I say wow you still got that frame like you got that what eight nine years ago yes yes and I said yeah I kind of remember and they go uh yeah I'm still getting compliments on it and I say you know what that justifies everything we do because you spent maybe just a little bit more but you're wearing the, something that other eyewear you probably would have thrown out uh, maybe six, seven years ago, you know, maybe after two years, you're, they're, they're done. And uh, here's something that looks good to this day. And you would not need anything new unless you wanted something new. And they still hold up. They look good. So that feels really, really good that um, uh, we can offer something that, that lasts. And um, the value is actually much higher. What's the difference to make that jump in quality you're using? plastics or resins titanium steel like what, well what's well there's there's definitely a lot of the the finer uh, acetates uh involved as, as opposed to some of the the cheap plastics like for example what do you mean when you say acetate acetate is a type of plastic that is most commonly used for eyewear uh and uh, there's also some eyewear that's produced with uh, uh a different format that's much thinner and lighter uh but it's very very cheap and it feels cheap but it can look nice so um, the true acetates that uh, the better acetates that we're finding uh, hold up so much better they hold their shape better they they have much more you know lustrous colors and and effects that can be used um, so 
uh, and then titanium, of course, is a strong one where you're seeing a lot. There's just a lot of detail. Um, I mean, some of our frames, a lot of our frames can take up to eight months to make. Uh, and, you know, uh, they can have up to 120 steps. There can be 50 you know, different craftsmen touching a different part of it at some point in its, you know, uh, production, um, you know, years and years and years of experience, all combined experience that are putting it together. And it shows when, we, when somebody puts it on and they feel it, they go, wow, this, this has some balls to it. Like it feels good. Like it, it's substance. And, um, that sounds like a Japanese sword maker. They have a team and these guys are like national treasures. They're it takes them months to make a single sword. Exactly. And ironically, or whatever, it, it, many of our top frames are made in Japan. Like Japan is just such a, a powerhouse for attention to detail and quality. And you've got craftsmen who have been, you know, working in the industry for 50 years. And this is just, this is what they do. And uh, it, it absolutely, you know, shines through. Again, there's going to be other uh, eyewear out there. And a lot of people... Um, I think still feel that I wear is just a, oh I just got to get some glasses and there's really not much they're they're of thought they're putting into it they're thinking price alone which is very very fair um, however when they do you know get uh, their you know standard eyewear that's you know it might have the name brand that they're used to that you can also get handbags and all this you know other they think it's a really high end brand however a lot of them are just pumped out of uh, you know. China, for example, in mass numbers and just stamped with a name on it, then the end user puts it on. And then at some point I may have to adjust it or fix it and it literally feels like it came from Petro Canada next door. My store, you know, it just, it just feels, you know, somebody paid really good money, um, definitely not, you know, as much as what they would have paid at my store, but they paid hard earned dollars for something that is worth literally very little, I feel, in quality and, and uh, the design might be good, but the, the quality and longevity isn't there. So, Didn't I see you wearing eyeglasses that had a, a record pressed into them? Absolutely. So there's a lot of creativity in our side of the industry as well, like really cool concepts that uh, that people are coming up with. So some great friends uh, have uh, out of Budapest have come up with a company called Vinylize Eyewear, and they have taken repurposed uh, vinyl albums and uh, fuse them onto the front of frames. So you get a nice black frame, but when you look up a little closer the way the light shines on it, we all see kind of the nice little groove effect of, of the vinyl record. And uh, it's kind of blended a little bit of uh, our culture for uh, A, um, uh, you know, recycling, uh, you know, goods and also, and repurposing them, uh, but also our love for uh, vintage items and vinyl and in general and the whole vinyl scene, rock and roll, uh, which is a very strong part of eyewear, you know, in the past with all the, you know, rock stars wearing uh, some cool shades here and there. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a, it's a piece of art. Like eyewear can be truly art that's a conversation piece. So we have a number of vinyl enthusiasts who have who have really enjoyed the vinylized collection and they've just released uh, uh, a limited edition back in black uh, collection sub collection where they actually take a real back in black album and produce uh, you know uh, their eyewear with that and it's it, it's just people connect with it and that's one thing um, that's kind of like closing the loop vinyl people say that Vinyl is richer and warmer, a more fuller audio experience compared to CDs and mm -hmm. digital. Yep. Now you're applying that to eyewear. It's kind of... It all works together. It really does. Again, it's very creative. It's, it's, it's art. And I think a lot of people don't realize, I mean, people put a lot of effort into everything, a lot of things they do in their life as far as their appearance. You know, um, uh, especially women, they have their hair, makeup, nails, lashes, you, you know, tanning, whatever they do, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then for so many, um, they disregard what, what the value of eyewear on their face is when really they work so hard to make their face look so good. And uh, we're there to help kind of just kind of put the cherry on the top with uh, something that's, you know, just kind of finishes off the look because it's the first thing we see is your face. And uh, a lot of people just, again, disregard, they just think a regular pair of glasses or something, a generic look. But, um, you know, in, in the whole big scheme of things, uh, it's something that 
I think provides people with a lot more joy when they actually love what they're wearing and they can love what they're wearing for a long time. They get a lot of compliments. And uh, I think, again, especially for women who quite often are terrified of wearing glasses and they'll, they'll stick to contacts because they don't like their glasses, it, it liberates them in a way that they can actually go, yeah, I'm going to wear my glasses today. I like how I look and I get compliments. And it's another option rather than being forced into contacts all the time. So... Uh, again, like like the beer, it's like once you once you discover it and you get to know it, it's very hard to go back to something that's very plain and regular, you know. So, what can customers expect when they walk into your store? What service or what experience do you do different? Well, I find in our industry, um, especially high end. Uh, luxury uh, stores uh, are a little too pr pretentious and we are absolutely anti-pretentious. Uh, we have prices you know ranging from a $299 complete package all the way up to thousands of dollars like we have we have everything. However when when people walk in the door um, we want them to feel welcome, invited and they want them to feel relaxed and comfortable. We have a, a somewhat of a different format where we have, uh, you know, it's very, it's full of art. We have graffiti on the walls. We have, um, you know, mannequins. We've got our vintage stereo system. It's a very, very relaxed atmosphere where people can just feel good and in a creative atmosphere. Are they able to ask you questions? Like, do you do consultations so you? make sure their glasses match the shape of their face right we're we, well when someone walks in i mean uh i mean we don't want to harass people but we're definitely hey how are you doing uh welcome to specs uh who's looking today and you know we really want to be there to help we're not very um uh we're not a very great uh browsing store where again because we have a lot of frames in drawers um tucked away because i don't want people to feel intimidated. A lot of times when there's just a bazillion things in any store, it's very, um, very intimidating and very, uh, there's a lot of pressure on someone to, you know, it just seems like white noise. So we have little bits here and there to kind of, uh, you know, kind of wet the palate a little bit. And uh, we ask questions. Uh, what are you looking for? We, we try to see what they're all about and and uh, get to know that person and, and then, we like, I kind of say, I kind of find that we see people from a different perspective because anytime somebody's going to look in the mirror with, with eyewear on, that picture to them in the mirror seems really weird. They're just not used to it. We have an open slate. It, we may have never seen this person before and yet getting to know them a little bit, we get to know, okay, how far do we go this way or that way? How safe do we go? How, how much do we push it? How do, you know, what kind of environment are they in? What, what's their comfort level? We still like to challenge the comfort level a little bit because if we didn't, everybody would just be wearing what they already wore for the last five years. And then the five years prior and the five years prior or whatever. So we want to challenge that a little bit and, um, and help them maximize their look within reason so then where the when they're out at the grocery store the restaurant work school um, people are going to compliment them or really notice that wow those look really good on you and that's what we're trained to do is to help so the drawers are like your little secret kept away you, yeah. you get a little nibble and then you say let's take a look at this and then boom you're like the genie well yeah and we can weed out a lot of the the product that just won't apply to, to each person because everyone's different and right now in style i mean there's modern retro big small bold disappearing it's all there we have absolutely everything i've got i have way too many frames right now because i'm a shopper but i like to have a nice variety so but we we can weed it out for you and take that stress away either we can have the client sit down relax um, and we can bring product to them or they can kind of tour with us while we kind of fire through um, the drawers. It's, it's much more of a consultative process that's based on the European format where a lot of classic opticians in, in Europe will actually not have any frames on display. You sit at a little desk with them and they have drawers next to them and they actually bring them out for you. Uh, so we have a little taste where you can see some of them and then the rest are... are you know, because again, we don't need to intimidate anybody with, with stuff that just won't 
apply to them anyway. I think we want to keep a relaxed atmosphere. I'm going to get a little philosophical on you okay. here. I was reading a book. It's it's all about choices. Mm-hmm. Um, the name escapes me, but basically she, it's called The Art of Choosing. Oh. And she says the ideal number of options to pick from is seven. Okay. Mathematically, socially, culturally, we can hold about a maximum of seven options in okay. our head to make an ideal choice. So what it sounds like you're saying to me is you get to peel away those layers yes. and help them make a more optimal choice. Yes. But our culture says if less is more, think how much more it could be. Mm-hmm. So we have, if you, if you have seven options, well, why not have 50 options? Why not have 100? Yep. But then you're losing something. You're losing that access to the expertise Correct. through noise and static. Yeah. Yeah, they it just they all they all blend into one another after a while. So um, that's that's a very very great concept that I'll have to look into for sure. I really like that. Uh, I, I, and I would say I somewhat practice that subconsciously. But uh, yeah, and, and again, trying to find the genre they're gonna like. Do they want classic? Do they want modern? Do they want metal? Do they want plastic? Do they want bright? Do they want whatever, and then find really, you know, yeah, the last you know. Between four and seven would be good where they can finally go, okay, I could say you could close your eyes and point now and there's no wrong answers. That's my ideal situation where you, we, the, the work has been done and they're all going to look great. And uh, we're also very proud to say um, that anyone with really strong corrections, um, we want to be the ones to really help them be confident in their eyewear again and make them really thin and look as thin as possible. We um, we cut our own lenses. We don't just send them off to a lab somewhere down east or west and then they magically come back and they're done because I find you know in those situations they're on an assembly line of minimum wage type you know people who don't really care what they're doing pressing automatic on every machine rather than looking at each pair individually like we do as a work of art and going, okay, how do we make this pair look as good as possible so that when we can present it to the client, we can show them the thickness or thinness of their lenses and wow them and go, wow, look at this. I think you're going to like this. And they go, I've never seen my glasses look like that before. One of the things I noticed when I was looking at your website was you guys offer Enchroma? Yes, very excited about Enchroma. And Enchroma is the um, uh, a solution option for uh, those with color deficiency or color blindness, and uh, we've had some great success with that already. Where uh, there's a large number, uh, about one in twenty uh, males are affected with color blindness, and one in two hundred women as well. So uh, it doesn't provide a total cure for everybody. Everyone has there's different uh, severities and types of color blindness. Uh, but those who it has helped have has, has really been, it's been very touching to see how it's changed their lives and added color to their lives. And there's actually more um, options coming right away from Enchroma to help maybe uh, some of those that weren't as successful when they, when they tried it. So we have samples at the store to try, free of charge, which is great. People can come in, uh, they don't have to order anything online and then ship it back if it doesn't work. They can come in and try it and learn about it. And uh, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, well, we, you know, we, we tried, but we will have more options coming very soon, hopefully to cover a broader spectrum of, of, uh, of people with uh, color blindness. If you're fitting someone with glasses for the first time, these Enchroma lenses, what's the reaction? What are they doing in their store when they see you for the first time? <laughs> you know, it, it's, everyone's kind of different. Uh, there's those who it's just silent for a while they're just absolutely I don't know is it working is it not working I like but they are absolutely silent and they're looking around at different things we give them a Rubik's cube you know sometimes we have balloons in the store we have all sorts of we have traffic lights outside um, some of them it's very quiet and some of them is like holy shit this is amazing like wow like th- like I can't like wow like so you get both kinds. We haven't had any tears just yet. We're look, We're still waiting for that YouTube moment. <laughs> but and we do have one fellow who doesn't want to come in and try it because he knows he said I'm just gonna cry and like I don't want anybody to see me cry. <laughs> I was like, get in here. We'll try him. <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's uh, 
it, it's, I like to say that we also, beyond fashion, offer some really wicked technology. I'm, I, I love what I do so much. It is definitely far from being a fashion only place. It is, if anybody has any really wicked eye problems or is not, uh, has struggled with their eyewear, has struggled with their vision uh, of certain lenses or progressive lenses, has, you know, nothing's, whoever they've gone to just has never, you know, got it right. I would love to be the one to troubleshoot and to fix it. I've been doing this since 1992. So I've, I'd like to say that I've seen almost any and every situation and uh, I like to be the fixer. So uh, if anybody out there needs uh, help with anything or knows anybody uh, that's struggled, I generally have, uh, it's very rare I, I can say that no, there is no solution for you. There's always some sort of an option to help. Deadly. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, I wanna thank you for coming on the podcast today. Hey, thank you so much, lots of fun. Rebels, thanks for tuning in this week. If you want to find the latest news about Rebellion Brewing, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Untapped. Thank you for joining the Rebellion.